Good grief. In spring? Yes. Officially now, the yes. vernial equinox has yes. uh, caught yes. up with equinox. the summer solstice. Yes. Uh, I never could get that straight in school, but it's spring. And even in Burbank, where you have senior citizens, romance starts to take root in the spring. I went by the Burbank Park today, and there was this lovely elderly couple on a park bench, and he leaned over to her and whispered those three little words. Call an ambulance. <laughs> no, they didn't do that at all. Don't, don't write me. No, there are signs of spring all over Southern California. Yes. Would you like to know some of them? Yes, I would. Over at his used car lot, Cal Worthington's hippo got a Winnebago in trouble. <laughs> You know, I saw one in spring in Hollywood, up on Sunset Boulevard. All the exhibitionists wear clean raincoats. It's, uh... <laughs> How are you, Tom? Very well. Boy, you look very sharp tonight. That's... That's Thank very you. natty. Thank you. This yeah. This is um, um, my streaking outfit. That's your streaking outfit. <laughs> they got Tom for streaking the other night. Yeah. Him, but he beat the rap. Insufficient evidence. <laughs> I couldn't resist. You had to bring it up. No, Doc is uh, is off somewhere. Doc is at a clothes yeah. breeding convention, isn't he? <laughs> no, he and Liberace are trying to mate two of their suits. Did you know that? It's... Spring is in the air. Well, let's well, let's go to the news and find out why these will never be called the good old days. Did you ever think in twenty years they're going to be talking about 1974's Ooh. the good old days? Mm. There's good news and there's bad news. Uh, the good news is that gold today is selling at $138 an ounce. The bad news, that's exactly the price of gas. <laughs> they are going bananas. But you say, you... remember a couple of weeks ago I said gas was going to be close to 70 cents within two or three weeks? And it happened today. Freddie went into a station. I went into a station today. I says, well, how much for a gallon of gas? The guy says, 67 cents. I said, can't you go any lower? And the guy says, yes, 67 cents. <laughs> Look, that's an old joke, but you're an old audience. What do I care? No, it is it's crazy. I give the guy a $20 bill today, and he wiped the windshield with it. They don't care about money at all. Getting on rhythm here. Well, what else is happening? Here's an item I think you'll find semi-amusing. Who do you think is holding a convention up in the city of Las Vegas, Nevada? <laughs> Wonderful straight man. Uh, the funeral directors of America mm. are holding... They used to be, when I was growing up, they, they used to call them undertakers when I was a kid. They don't like that word anymore, right? It's funeral directors. See, if you say undertaker, it sounds like somebody died and they don't want anything to do with that. Uh, but can you imagine a funeral director in Las Vegas? Las Vegas? Can't you see the house detective knocking on the door, yelling late at night? Get your loved one out of there! <laughs> one, two, three. No, I think that's, uh... I think that's a perfect place to have a funeral director's convention. Vegas will see to it that their money gets perpetual care. <laughs> you see what it is? There's, there's nothing good in the news anymore. Everything is depressing. Read in the paper, there's nothing but muggings, rapes, killings. And that was just a little orphan Annie, but I want to tell you. <laughs> oh. But tonight, anyway. <gasps> what? Oh. Charlton Heston is here tonight. This could be an interesting show. Charlton Heston. They almost didn't let him in tonight. He had an odd number on his chariot, and they stopped him at the gate. We have Mr. Dom DeLuise from Lots of Luck right next door. Hey. Our resident zanies, who's going to do another crazy sketch for us tonight. The Ace Trucking Company is here. And... A lovely lady, a special guest tonight, a very good friend of ours, Miss Lucille Ball. Thank you. We'll be right back after this word. Thank you.
We're back. Oh, yes. There should be fun in that. We got Lucy, Great, huh? Lucy with us. Wow. Hi, Charlton Heston, the Ace Trucking Company. Hey, Dom Delaware's job. Yeah. Good show. You're going to be off tomorrow this week. Where Doc is in Florida? I'm going to join him, oddly enough. We have all our travel. Oh, is he coming finally... apart? <laughs> yes, of course. Groucho Marx, 1937. Yes. He's down in Tampa for uh, something for the horse. There's a horse show, a big horse show down there. And I'm down for a thing for the retarded children in uh, St. Petersburg, right oh. joining that town. So we'll be together tomorrow night. Good now. Nice. What was that definition? Oh, I can't do it on the air. What? I always remember the definition of a horse show. What is it? No, you can't do it on television. It's Whisper in my ear. What? Whisper no, that's not fair to the audience. It. What is it? You can't do it. <laughs> Whisper. You can't say it. <laughs> All right. All right. Do it. You can Fred? do it. Fred's our producer. What yeah. do you think, Fred? You can do it. Go ahead. Some guy. What is a horse show? Well, some guy. <laughs> Described a horse show once as a lot of horses showing their a lot of horses showing their horses. <laughs> it's good. It's good to get that out of your system. These people will laugh. They'll probably cut. Well, anyway, you're familiar with this book? Oh, the Book of Records. The Guinness yes. Book of World Records. This is the new giant 1974 edition, and I don't believe it. Before they you have... do that, can I mention one thing that's kind of classy? Really. And I just saw it today. Do you Certainly. know we are in the World Book Encyclopedia? The Tonight Show. What category? Defi- it's a definition what? of television. That's pretty classy. When you in make the, world the, encycl- book? the World Book. Well, well, that's, that's right. Very they good. Sent Congratulations. A, they yes. sent us a flyer on that. There's yeah. some pictures of a lot of the members of the staff in there. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's nice. big. That's big times. Yeah. The Guinness Book of Records. Yes. Yeah. You want it? Not, it's full of thousands of them here, but I'm going to read some of the. People will do anything to get in a Guinness Book of Records. The longest engagement they have. They have a whole section on marriage and divorce. Longest engagement on record is one of 67 years <laughs> between Octavio Guillen, 82, and Adriana Martinez, 82. They finally took the plunge in June 1969 in Mexico City after an engagement of 67 years. Mm. Where do you plunge to after so many years? 67 years. The longest marriage record is one of 86 years. That's what it says between, I can't even read the name, Sir Temulji Biahaje Nerman and Lady Nerman from 1853 to 1940. <laughs> Sounds well, like one of your characters, Nerman. It certainly does. <laughs> Fred Nerman. They've married 86 years. The longest single unbroken apple peel. A lot of folks have asked about this. Wait. But am I making this up? The longest single unbroken apple peel on record is one of 130 feet, 8 and a half inches, peeled by Frank Freer of the United States <laughs> in eight hours at Walcott, New York on October 17, 1971. The apple was 15 inches in circumference and they have that in the Guinness Book of Records. Now, that's the kind of crazy stuff. Would you like to hear a couple more? Sure. Ball punching. Ball, ball punching. Ball punching. Ron Ranouf, Australia, equal his own world duration ball punching record of 125 hours, 20 minutes on December 31st, 1955. I suppose it's a, the punching bag is what they're talking about, isn't it? Brick throwing. The greatest reported distance for throwing a standard five-pound building brick is 135 feet eight inches by Robert Gardner of Stroud, Gloucestershire, England. Isn't that fascinating? Yes. Crawling. This one you might be interested in. The longest crawl. <laughs> they don't know if they know that you haven't. On hands and knees on record was one of 5.53 miles in nine hours and 16 minutes by Morgan Remmel, 38 of Denmark. <laughs> they make those names up, I think. <laughs> Face slapping? They made a commercial out of this one, I think. Right. Alka Seltzer or somebody made a commercial? The face slapping contest duration record was set in Kiev, the United States Socialist Republic, in 1931. A draw was declared after 30 hours. And they give the names which you won't believe Vasily Bednorov and Gunishnik. <laughs> they slap each other for 30. Well, what else you got to do over there? <laughs> the most kissing. Here's one you'll be interested in. The most prolonged osculatory marathon in cinematic history, motion pictures, is one of 185 seconds. Now, you'll never guess who set that record. If you sat here forever, which we have been. Yes. <laughs> by Regis Toomey and Jane Wyman. And you're in the Army now in 1940. Regis Toomey and Jane Wyman? Kissed for 130 hmm. seconds. Yeah. Anyway, it's full of stuff like this. It's absolutely incredible. Hmm. World Guinness Book of Records. It's rather fascinating reading. Hmm. Interesting, right? That's great. I love books like that. I like a book that puts it all together between two covers. I like a book that tells you all there is to know about a thing in one shot. 
Why go back and look at another book if you can get it all in one book? You're right. <laughs> they did that's a it. wonderful job. That's all there is. That's it. Yeah. It's just absolutely so complete. But that's the end of it. It's the end of this book, but unfortunately, <laughs> this book, you see, went to press. It's the 74 edition, but it went to press several months ago. Oh. Since then. There have been additions? There have been additional records that the Guinness Book did not have on the plates and could not print. What, we, do we have them? Yes, we do. Oh, good. We have some here that uh, they'll probably be in the next book. <laughs> These, they're strange. <laughs> the world's weirdest book, the Guinness Book of Records. They didn't have that in there. World's strangest funeral goes to Ewell Gibbons' father, Buford Gibbons, who requested that his body be tied to four squirrels so that he'd be laid to rest in a hollow tree. <laughs> it wasn't in the book. The world's most pointless television game show. Now, there are a lot of entries in this field. Eleven shows... <laughs> Eleven shows were tied per second in pointless television game shows, but the winner was Bob Barker's new show, Bowling for Towels. <laughs> the world's beer-drinking record is held by Gunther Gable Wilhelms, who drank 212 pitchers of beer in one sitting, and he's expected to claim his award as soon as he comes out of the men's room sometime <laughs> in early October. <laughs> World's longest child labor The mother was Mrs. Penelope Sagan Who was in labor for 12 days Oddly enough, the birth took place in a yellow cab Stuck in traffic on the Harbor Freeway So that's <laughs> a good example Here's one they don't have in here The world's strangest patent In 1967, Alfred E. Moldman <laughs> Invented Teflon underwear Here's the longest, world's longest war. I'll bet you didn't know this one. Started in 1921 between Peru and Sao Paulo. Hostilities were supposed to end in 1922. But the president of Peru, Pedro Pancho Pepetito, sent to Sao Paulo to pronounce the proposal of the peace pact. Stutters over the letter P. And he has spent the last 53 years trying to say his name. He is still down there. <laughs> that is still officially the longest war. The world's fastest man was Irving Furman. <laughs> Who ate so many hamburgers at a local McDonald's that when he tried to leave, he got stuck between the golden arches. That is not easy to do. World's most useless medical discovery was by Dr. Sidney Koch, who tried to treat sex problems with acupuncture. <laughs> Here's the world's stupidest hobby. Harmon Garnets won the award for his hobby, which was painting other people's homes while they slept. <laughs> The world's most painful streak was by Bernie Yutzman, who ended his streak of the 42nd Street IRT subway station by vaulting over a locked turnstile and almost making it. <laughs> and we have one final one here. The world's loudest scream. That's right. Bernie Yutzman again. <laughs> just a few little records there we have. We'll be back in a moment with Lucille Ball, Don DeLuise, Chuck Kess, and the Ace Trucking Company after this brief respite. <laughs> My first guest this evening, I consider a good friend, and I uh, have tremendous, tremendous sad admiration for her. She is, she's the first lady of television, of as course. far as I'm concerned, and for nope. the past... It's hard to believe for the past 22 years, starting with I Love Lucy, The Lucy Show, and Here's Lucy, has been just incredible. And lately, she's added another remarkable achievement to her career by playing the lead in the new motion picture, Mame, which is out. Would you welcome, please, Lucille Ball. Yeah. Those takes. What a My God, it's here. a surprise to see you here. 
<laughs> what do you... <laughs> Filling in for Joy Bishop tonight is all I'm doing while Joy is oh, off. Thank God. How are you, love? Not that I don't like Joy Bishop. I know. It's thank nice you. to see you. Thank you very much. Are you That's... still happy? What do you mean, still happy? Well, well you I've get only... married a lot. I've only... <laughs> I've only... Been... Oh, you're bloated for bear tonight. <laughs> I've only... It's my third marriage, and uh, you know Joanna you don't very have well, to and she's a lovely, lovely I girl. wish you something on your wedding night that I have had for 12 years. Oh, I the remember greatest years. happiness, and that I really mean. With Gary... I remember that night at, at our party at well, the Beverly Hills. Well, you better remember. It was your wedding night. That was right. And the start of our 11th year, you got up and said, I hope you're as happy every year that I've been the last 12, which is very nice. That's right. And it's nice to see you. You went out on you. tour, I know, and you... You said back in the dress. We just said hello in the dressing room because you don't like to talk before the show. I right? don't like to talk to you any time. And all you... <laughs> and she said, now, ask me something that you're really interested in tonight, right about me. Is there anything that you're interested in, Johnny? Yes. About me, what? H how old were you, for example? <laughs> how old? No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> how, old, how old were you? <laughs> he didn't mean that. I didn't mean how old. He didn't mean that. I would please. never ask a lady's age. He wouldn't ask that. No, I'm not I've been here with him 11 and a half years. He's never asked that of a lady. I, I haven't lost my hearing. No, you didn't let me finish. All you heard was how old, and I said, how, I was going to say, how old were you when you first lost your virginity? <laughs> I just wanted to see one of those takes again. Just, ah. That's the kind of a take when, that you <laughs> that you make when you walk into that hotel in Atlanta. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, the, what do you the call profanity it? Profanity corner. No. Yeah. What? That's called the profanity. No, the the, the, the hotel in Atlanta. I mean, that's what they call it. The, the Regency Hyatt House. It's called the. Oh my God. Oh, when you walk in and see yeah. that yeah. open. Oh, the... this hotel yeah. is not to be. I have been on a tour. You've been all over the country, haven't you? I think so. I'm not yeah. sure where I've been. Oh, my word. And Gary said something sensation. about 35 cities or something like that? No, no, no. Nothing no, there. not that many cities, but 235 interviews, you know, and, uh. and seeing people from that many cities. But um, it has been fabulous. But that hotel in Atlanta put me away, and it's called the Oh My God yeah, because uh, entrance, because everybody goes, oh, I mean, yeah. they can't get their mouth closed. They have one. Did you get around answering that question? What question? No, no, that, that question. That question was just for a little shock value. Just well, to it see certainly you're, worked. You were paying attention. Did you do. Does the tour. <laughs> the short naps are wonderful, aren't they? Yeah. Was the tour a grind or did you have any the fun? The tour at was all? a grind and I had a lot of fun and I, had a, I got a lot accomplished. Right. And uh, I felt very good about it because the three people that knocked the picture were the three people that should, yeah. and the rest of the people were great. Somebody told me what it opened. Is it open in New York already, hasn't it? Yes. It was one of the biggest grossing records record and pictures God, ever started. It's breaking records with the kind of people that I wanted to break records with. That's the people who go see pictures. No, it's the people that oh. haven't been going to see pictures. You oh, see how wrong you're Just like I said, the people who haven't, but would like to see, or know people who have seen pictures. No, but I think or have there a are picture a lot in their wallet. big lines <laughs> around, uh, not, not necessarily bad pictures. Yeah. They're great pictures, some of them. But I, I, I made a family picture, and I stuck my neck out, and so did Warner's, right. and so did Mr. Fryer, and a lot of people, you know, that connected with it. But thank God it's breaking. What is your name again? <laughs> She's doing those delayed, uh, long things tonight. No, seriously. seriously I'm very, course. very happy with what, what's happened. Are Leave you really? me alone, will you, Ed? What am I doing here? <laughs> I'm helping you. I'm supporting you. I'm glad, it's, I'm glad it's a big hit for you. Well, really. so far, it's off to a great start, and I'm very, very proud because yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of everything that we did. And I felt that there were a lot of people that, uh, en masse, could not go, I mean, en famille, uh, famille, famille could not go to the theater. Uh, it was just sort of the young people that were lining up, you know. And uh, I'm not saying this is a picture, picture just for older people, and, but I mean for the entire family I was trying to make a picture. It's not a pornographic picture. No, John. That's what you're trying to say. You can take the family and your friends and your mother right. and your sweetheart. Right. If your wife doesn't find out. Right. <laughs> You got me on a roll. Uh, we're going to take a break here, but we're coming right back. A yes, break. we are. We That's have to sell something. Bill, That's you? right. <laughs> we 
had to turn. We're back on the air. Are you two holding hands? He's comforting, isn't he? He's comforted a great, many a damsel. Uh, we had a great week together. We worked together. I worked on Lucy's show early in the season. That's it's right. Sensational. He's a fine pro. I like pros. Yeah. I like pros that show up. I'm here tonight. No. Oh. But I, just, I, I only said that to say how much I miss you when you're not here, Johnny. I oh, really mean it. Well, thank you, darling. That's I very nice. I really mean it. We really miss you when you're not oh. here. I have to get away occasionally, don't uh, I can understand that. I can understand that. And you're getting away from your series, too, I read Please after... Please don't touch me, Johnny. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Move the sequin out of position there. <laughs> Boy, when they're big. Uh, after no, when they're tired. After 23... You're liable to knock me over. <laughs> after 23 years, I read in the paper the other day of Lucy, I love Lucy, and here, Lucy, you, you're not going to do series anymore. Right? Or the Lucy series. I'm not leading CBS, and I have other things to do, and I'd rather you didn't mention 23 years. Oh, I think that's a remarkable record. You know record. something? You know mm. something? For the last four or five years... This is the truth. Yeah. I have been going into supermarkets or department stores and or whatever, walking along the street, and people will stop me and say, why did you leave? Why aren't you doing your show anymore? And I said, I have never quit. Right. It's been years. I was off once for a year and a half right. or something. And I said, you know, you're not watching Monday nights. You're watching all the reruns, so you're not even going to know that I'm off. I have six years of reruns yet to go. And that's just in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> But it's true. Absolutely true. People say, why did you quit? And I haven't quit at all. I've been working my thing off. But you're going to stay in television. You're going to do specials. and uh, Yes, I have a couple a of specials, and I have some things that I want to do. And my daughter, Lucy, is not with us. So I, it, it, right. it recall, it re, it, what? I can't even think of the word. It calls for a change of format, because right. Lucy's on the road doing the National Company of Seesaw. And uh, so Gail and I are on our own, so to speak. Yeah. And so we might as well do a couple of specials. I don't know with whom or where, but uh, that's what CBS wants, and I'm with CBS, and that's okay. fine. Hey, all your kids are doing well. Lucy's on the road. You mean all my kids. I only got two. Well, look, all of them. Both of them. Both of them. <laughs> that's all, isn't it? You, that's yeah. all, isn't it? Two Both is all. Both my kids are doing well. They're learning. They're making their mistakes on their own. See, that's good. Yeah, that's right. Don't you... You... Exercise a certain amount of control, don't you? I mean, no, give them advice. Not anymore. Or, really? I've given them all the advice that I can give them, and I've given them all the training that I can give them. They're out on their own. Mm hmm. Don't well, just suppose leave one me. of them came to you and said, "Hey, mom, they want me to be in uh, one of them nude pictures. Oh, you know, it's an yeah. X-rated picture." First Would you give all, them some advice then? You bet your thing. You bet your bippy. <laughs> They wouldn't come to me with that because they're beyond that. They know that that's prostitution, and they wouldn't do it. And they don't need to... No, they don't need it. I feel sorry for the young people that do need it because they're being exploited. Don't look at me like... I'm agreeing oh, with yeah, you. Well, I hope so. This is not a string. I actually okay, can do this. I, uh, I think that the young people are being exploited that uh, are, you know, are a little hungry. Don't laugh at him. Don't make him think that he's he's saying the right thing all the time. Have a stern face oh, I guess, guess I will. No, I think you're right. No, it's serious. I'm very serious about it because they are being exploited. There are porno jobs around for people who think they have to work. They'd rather, you know, work than be an unemployed actor. I'd rather be an unemployed gas employee, or that's the wrong thing to say right now, isn't yeah. it? But anyway, um, my kids would not come and ask that question because they would know the answer. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. That's what I wanted to know. Yeah. What? Here's your son. <laughs> yes, yes. You're not going to get away with that. That's coming over to my city. Come on, thank you. I don't know. I just wanted to ask. We've been hoping you'd come home for a long time, son. That ads in the papers and everything. Have you been hurt in the war? What? What are you talking? The cane? No, it means nothing. I thought. <laughs> Leave it alone. I thought you had something. Uh... Huh? No, I thought you really had something wrong. So, no, yeah. well, actually, I do, but it, it's an old injury, a football injury, and every time the weather acts up, my knee kind of He's acts 21. up. He's 21. Look at the old... What do you mean, old football injury? 
It's like my old war injury. I have this piece of shrapnel. Yeah. I, I pick uh, up in my back. What was your last name? Wait. <laughs> You're right, it happened in St. Louis, as a matter of fact. Hotel Keep Hey, you found time to come over here and say hello to your old, I poor sure old mother, did. huh? I did. I'm doing Lampoon right next door. Well, Don't be pushing another show. Well, that's why I came over, actually. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I came haven't over. seen you in weeks. That's why you came over. Why don't you ever write? <laughs> that's, true. that's what my mother always says. Oh, well, you've been away. 49 I've been years here. old. I've been working, but you've been away or going all over the country with the movie. Have you seen the picture yet? And I want yet? a congratulation. No, I haven't seen the movie yet. See? No, but I, I, I saw... Uh, what do you mean, see? All of a sudden, everybody's picking on me. <laughs> you were invited to the preview. Where were you? I was working. I have things to do. Mothers I have, never change, do they? <laughs> Where were you? Have you you were invited. Taking care of yourself? Yes, I have. I've been working very hard. I'm doing the thing over with Schlatter, and uh, I'm doing another show on another network that we don't want to get the into. The rash clear up all right? I don't know. I'm just trying to get in here. Johnny, jump in any time. I just want to feel like a father. Jump in any time. I just want to know one thing. With whom are you in love today? No one. <laughs> Only you. Does she Thank ask you. about... Well, I might you heard me. I, yeah. I haven't seen him in weeks. Really, we haven't seen each other in a couple of weeks. We, we get together every now and then. We have dinner together and say, hi, and how have you been, and what's going on, and that's about I it. I keep up with his romances, and I try to get, keep his room in order. Just in case... In case it... he wants to come back. Do you really keep a room there ready? Well, I'm... Oh, yeah, there, his room is there, but it's full of boxes. Yeah. Of things that I'm not sure. I'm not. You don't sure. want to go into that. Millions no, of people are watching. No, no, but uh, they they know. They recognize. They have rooms with boxes sitting there. Sure they do. And they have animals in the backyard that their kids. You know, all of a sudden, on. I'm feeling like Ralph Edwards. <laughs> Remember this voice? Because the combination of my contact. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Guess who that is, folks? Get him up. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for this get together. I really I did not. I'm delighted. Surprise to me. Delighted well, it was a surprise to me too. You walked in and surprised me. <laughs> I'm just glad to see you. <laughs> thank you, darling. Thank I'm leaving you. in a couple of days again. You are. Uh, you see. You see. You see. I yes, wanted I'm... to say hello to Johnny and Hey, thank you. Well, Johnny Fred. is hard to catch up with. I'd never see Johnny. Last time I saw Johnny, he was in the back seat of my Aston Martin. I was taking him home. That's right. <laughs> I would, no, I, 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 my car broke down. My, my, car bro my car broke down one night. Where was this? What? Where was this? Uh, I had a... Uh, years, ago. years ago. Years ago. Hubcap, and I was out from pumping up the tire. I had a little hand pump, and your son came along and said, Hey, I've got an Aston Martin. Well, I thought he said... Uh, anyway, it's a long story. I don't want to go into it. Thanks for the lift. We'll be right back after a word from one of our sponsors. Say goodbye to one member of the clan. You going back? Are you rehearsing Lampoon right now? Yeah. Down the hall? Yeah, we're doing Lampoon right now, and I'm going to go back and finish it up. I just wanted to say hello. Hey, thanks for dropping. This is fun. Thank you. Really? Yeah, right. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When he first walked in with a cane, I thought he'd... Uh, Scared me to you death. Did a I years thought ago, he had a... skiing business. Yeah. How is that? Is that the... My leg is so strong that the other one's got to catch up with it. So you got that all fixed up from the The leg is sensational. Right. All you have to have is Anna White, the choreographer on MAME, and you're Keeps set it. for life. Are you going to stay off skis now? I can't ski downhill, but I ski well, too. Well, it's not easy already... uphill. <laughs> I've like skied an idiot going out already. Yeah. You ought to try that. What's that? Ski tour? Ski tour. Cross-country skiing. No downhill. That's all. That's very tiring, isn't it? No, it's sensational. Like I said, it's You're out it's downhill. And... <laughs> no, no, really, it, it's it's the 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 cut the outfit that you have on is easier, and and the uh, you just walk, and it's good for the. Don't make fun of me, Johnny. Don't make fun of you? You tickle me tonight. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> that's right. We're going to see Groucho later. I've got it on my mind because we're going to dinner for Jack Benny tonight, yes. and uh, you're going to be there in the. And, God uh, bless Jack, him. Jack Benning and George Burns and Groucho Marx and Bob Hope and Roz Russell on the dais, which is... And you, which should be a lot of fun. Do I have to speak? 
Just yes, speak a little. No, yes. I have no speech ready. Oh, yes, I think I just, I love you, Jack, that's all. Well, hopefully we can punch that up a little. <laughs> can you stay for a, for a little while when no. Dom, for, when, while Dom comes out? Dom who? Dom DeLuise. Oh, He loves yeah. you. He, he's a great admirer of yours. Yes. And he says, I hope Lucy stays for a few minutes while I'm on. Oh, I love him. All I wrote right. him a fan letter. Well, coming from you, that's his high compliment. Would you welcome from next door, from Lots of Luck, Mr. Dom DeLuise. First of all, yes. I want you to know if your kids walk out here, this is going to be disgraceful. Oh, I don't want... <laughs> well, they, well they'll be in diapers. Mine are in diapers. That's right. But it must be terrific to have a big boy like that. Does it feel good to have a big... And then to be a mother. You, you, you know, you've entertained us for years, and then all of a sudden you became a mother. And talking about his room and his boxes and things. It's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to be a mother? No, no. Well, maybe for an hour or so. I don't know. No, no. Yeah, it is sort of nice for him to come in. He's a good boy. You know, he said, he's. I want to surprise her. How do you get out there? You know, so I Just showed him where out. the crack was. Sure. And, uh... <laughs> we refer to it as our stage opening. It's stage uh... opening. <laughs> There'll be a crack on your show if you want it, but on our show, it's the, the entrance we call it here. We don't call it a crack in the wall. You're on prime time, and of course, it's crack over there. But... Well, on prime time, we call it a crack, but that's, you know, that's different. Okay. I anyway, was going to mention this before you came out. Yes? You're going to be a guest star on Medical Center? Medical Center. Isn't that something? Yeah, I think that's serious. I have no disease, but it's a very serious... Um... I, I, have a, I mean, you don't have I to have, have a itch. itch. No, you don't. Well, that's what everybody says to me. I said, I'm doing a medical center. And they said, well, you know, what have you got? And I said, oh, it's a, you know, it's seven days work is what I want. You know, but they said, no, what? <laughs> what sickness? And I said, well, it's, it's a little kid that's very sick. And oh, I see. It's, a, it's wonderful to do serious. Dramatic room? Yeah. I want to talk about, can I jump quickly to Maine? Well, you can jump any place you want. Okay. What? <clears throat> to, to Maine. The, the, I want to talk about the, the relationship between the boy and Lucy in the film. It was just... That's right. You saw one of the previews. Oh, and I just... We sat... My wife and I just was so moved by it. The, you know, like, when, when, an, when you clap a, for a film... That's, what? When you go like this... Oh, for, for a movie... <laughs> uh, Lucy, on your set, you say clap here, we say clap. applaud. We say clap, yeah. applaud. Yeah. applaud. When you, when you come in the crack... It's going to be a long night here on the farm. Just go right ahead. Anyway, well, I found myself clapping along with all the people, the 200 or so people that were seeing the film. We were just cheering, you know, for the, for the film. And then I was crying because of the relationship between the boy and Lucy. And I think that you're an incredible actress. And I want to thank you publicly for all those wonderful years. You should have been on all that time. And you should not leave us. You yeah. were wonderful. I know you're not leaving. I mean, you know. I'm not leaving. I, I just... What, with a family uh, reunion and everything, this is getting pretty teary here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I have six years' product and a couple of things that I want to do. And I'm so happy that you spoke about that little boy. His name, get the name. Yeah. Kirby Furlong. Oh, come on now. Yeah, Kirby Oh, Furlong. nobody is named Kirby Furlong. And they found him in a bread commercial. He was eight and a half when they found him. He was ten when we finished the picture. And he is an unusual little boy. And it was very easy to do those scenes with him because... You could really fall On or off, I was madly in love with this child. We couldn't even say good, good, e you know, good night every evening and... and uh, Without crying. Well, it showed. It showed. That kind of he thing He is showed. something. He's a natural. Hi, any time. Hi, Dom. No, no. It's all right. One of the things that I had to do in the medical center was to be in love with a little boy who was not my son, but uh, a, a, like adopted. Well, you should find that easy to do. Yeah. I'm crazy about kids. How many do you have? I have three. Three boys. And it's hard. I have three also. Do you? Mm -hmm. Want to get in here once in a while. <laughs> So people don't think I'm off. No. no, don't you think that it's that it's difficult to discipline a children? Yes. Yes. I do. You know. Yes, you, it is. Uh, because um, it's tougher to discipline three of them. That they're going to be happy. You know. You think that they're safe. <laughs> right. You know. But what happened? Let me tell you a story. All right. Okay. All right. I can you win? Not now. Later. No. We'll, we'll all want to hear the story sure. when, we, when we come back. I'm going to get like Cheryl. <laughs> I don't know what I do. What did I say wrong? We're going to, uh, I think, continue after we, after we do this. this so, you, you stay with us, folks. 
Banana City here. Ruth, I know we have to say goodnight to you because you have to go and you've got to change and uh, get ready to go to this function tonight. And yes, I thank you, you for coming, up, really. I Johnny. certainly will be. And thank you very All much. Right, it's been a pleasure seeing you. Thank you, Lewis. Really good. Thank you. Thank you. See, yeah. she stood up, she Style. took a bow, and went out the crack. You see, out the, out the entrance, out, out the, the exit. entrance. Out the but exit. I mean, it, it is like a crack. She's terrific. I'm now, what was the story you were going to tell? Well, first of all, I, I want to tell you that I would like, since I'm, since this is a departure for me to do a serious piece of work, it is on March 25th, which is next Monday, on Medical that. Center. And I want right. to say one word about Chad Everett, who... Uh, it was interesting. They had a lot of trouble when they were filming our scenes together because they, they couldn't tell us apart in the, in, the bright, in the bright lights. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> he's terrific. He yeah. laughs. He's got such enthusiasm. And that's the nice thing because you're here a long time. You're zestful right. about your work. He's been there five years and they were so enthusiastic, as enthusiastic as I was about it, you know. Yeah. So it was a nice departure for me. That should be something. Have you ever done a dramatic, straight dramatic role? Not really. At home, I'm yeah. very dramatic. You know, what's happening here? You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, out, get out, you know. Who took my celery? You know, something. Everybody who does comedy, <laughs> everybody who does comedy or spent their life doing light comedy acting always wants to get ahead. You want role. to do it. Yeah, to you see know? if you can really handle it. And you always think you have potential, you know, that you have potential for great, for great uh, tragedy. And this gave me a nice opportunity. It was... More fun than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be very serious. But as you do a scene where you have to cry or something, they all cheer and, and you know, they go, Yippee! At the end of it, yeah. you know. They're very silly. Look forward to it. Good. You know, we talked a lot about your dad last time he was on the show, who must yes. have been a fascinating man. Did he? He never got a chance to see you on television, did he? Yeah, he did. Did he? Yeah, he thought it was terrific. He said, That's a nice. I did. You do nice. Said, okay, nice. Come on, let's eat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't all that important, you know, huh? Yeah, he liked it. He, was, he would say, oh, God, God bless you. Which is, God bless you. And uh, he and I, he would he he had a, an accent, obviously, or uh, and he would say he would call breakfast. He would say breakfast. Breakfast. I have a nice breakfast. He was a terrific man. I really yeah, love him. Yeah, I can. You can tell that when you talk about him. And I, he would say, I "What the hell is going that? on here?" A lot. What the hell is going uh, on? Yeah. And he would yell. He would just scream. If if somebody came along and and picked his hedges, you know, you know hedges. You know what hedges are. Of course I know yeah. what hedges are. <laughs> I don't know. I think of you as behind 48 that chair years old, for your I whole said, life. I just think, I know, but... Growing out of the ground, you yeah, clip yeah, them. Yeah, and he used to clip them very, you know, and then... I know them. hollyhocks, too, and all those oh, things. They never heard hollyhocks. Anyway, if you picked his hedges in, in one place, it used to be like a little hole in his hedges, and he would look out his window and just watch if anybody walked by, you know, and he would just yell at you if you picked his hedges. And one time my aunt, Zamada Lane, she was a very dignified lady. She would walk, I'll, I'll say, you know, she was very dignified. But she used to like to pick a hedge and stick it in her mouth. And my father, out the window, just saw this hand, and he said, Hey, what the hell? Don't go on! Get out of the way! You know, and my, and she, and her hat when it, just, and my, this very dignified lady just went, Hey, Juwan, it's me, I, you know. <laughs> That's said, I'm hedge. sorry, Zamada Lane, I thought it was something, you know. Very strange. My family liked that story a lot. <laughs> That's the strangest question I've been asked in a long time. Do you know what hedges are? Well, you know, because you think of you as sitting here... I wasn't just, born just by this place, with you know. Pencil. I wasn't incubated here. No, I, I actually understand, lived but you another life, you, you know. As being here all the time, doing your pencil. No, I actually have been away from here, and I've been out and seen trees. That's and, right. You have a whole life. And right. forests, and I've seen hedges. Well, and, and that story was about hedges. All right, anyway, discipline. I, I mean, I try to be very uh, gentle but firm with my children. Right. It's so hard. That's very hard to do yeah. that. And <clears throat> one time, Peter was uh, beating Michael up. Peter's seven, Michael's five, and, and Michael's really little. And I said, no more hitting, you understand? No more hitting, no hitting allowed. Use words. Hit a pillow, kick a can. But don't, don't hit your brother. Do you understand that? Nice as... Gently as firm as I could. Uh -huh. And the next thing, I come into the room. May I use your neck a minute? And Peter was choking Michael and sitting on his chest. And he was going like this, you know. And I said, what's going on? What's going on here? And my, my, my words must have rung in his ear. And he said, it's an accident. It's an accident? <laughs> <laughs> 
said, it's a mistake. It's a mistake. <laughs> I, I don't know what to do. It's an do. accident. It's an accident. <laughs> you know? <laughs> choking. He was choking her. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll, what are you know, doing? Nothing is what you usually get. Nothing. What yeah. are you doing? Nothing. And then to wait, how do you teach them? By giving them a swat? What do you do? Well, what did you do? Some people say you should whack a child. Some psychiatrists say it doesn't do any good to... To strike a child, because well, you usually strike a child when you're, you're when you're angry. Him. When you're angry, hit. You usually, that's what you're well, teaching. you're teaching him. Yeah, that's the trouble. You usually hit a child in anger, and then later on you calm down, and he figures that's the way you should do it. Yeah. Well, it's very hard. Sometimes when I'm mad, I hit. I don't know what to do. The, the brothers, next thing I see is just blue. I see my fingerprints on a Brothers on are going to fight occasionally. They're going to fight. In the oh, they're going to fight until they're 18, I guess. Sure. Yeah. All their life. Very hard. That's catchy. <laughs> we have the East Trucking Company and Charlton Heston will join us. Oh, but my first, God. We have, is he going to part the red sea He's going to part your hair right here on the... <laughs> Lots of luck. Yes. <laughs> uh, the East Trucking Company is with us tonight. There are four very talented guys who uh, appear also individually in television and motion pictures. They will be at the... Blue Max in Chicago, April 1st through the 6th, and we'll be working in Pasadena at the Ice House through Sunday. Would you welcome Mike Mislove, Fred Willard, George Memoli, and Bill Saluga, the Ace Trucking Company. Okay. Well, what do you think, Danny? Eh, I don't know. I hate to close up this early on a Saturday night. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Danny. I see some headlights coming up the highway there. I hope they pull in here. Well, they have to. I got the barricade up. <laughs> I'll go out and get them. You're right this way, sir. Danny, a customer. Good evening, sir. Can I help you? Uh, I wanted to get a hamburger. You have a re reservation? No. <laughs> that's okay. I can go down the road to oh, the no, other that's all right. Michael? <laughs> Customer front. Oh, uh, good evening, sir. Can I help you? I wanted to get a hamburger. I see, sir. Do you have a reservation? No, I don't. No reservation. Mm. How many in your uh, party, sir? Uh, just myself. <laughs> Table for one. Uh, I want to keep this open. Uh, let's play it by ear. Put him there temporarily. All right. Fine, sir. Would you step this way, please? Oh, sir, one second. Before you step into the dining room... We do have a very strict jacket and tie policy here at Denny's. Oh, well, that's all right. No, I'll go down the right, road. Sir. We it's... have a house coat here for you. Stick it here right there. There you go, sir. You go. Now you look like a gentleman. Just keep the riffraff out, sir. You'll be more comfortable, and we'll be more comfortable. Right, sir. And uh, we'll wave the tie. Oh, thank you. That's quite all right. Just step right this way, sir. Just have a seat. Now, will you be, uh, will you be ordering wine with your meal, sir? No, I just want a hamburger and a cup of coffee. Let me step down to the cellar and pick out something that might be just right for I the I think occasion. the bourgeois 62 would be very nice. <laughs> now, sir, what would you like to start with? Just a hamburger. I see. La hamburger ordinaire. Very good, sir. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll try to rush this order in very, way, uh, very quickly, sir, because there is no serving during the show. Show? Welcome to Danny's on the Turnpike. We uh, have a, quite a show lined up here for you tonight. Sit back and relax and enjoy yourself. As I look around, I see a lot of old friends have dropped in to say hello. And uh, also, also a lot of new faces out there in the audience tonight. And we certainly hope that from now on, you'll make Danny's your home for entertainment. Anyone out there from out of town? Any out of towners in the house tonight? Where are you from, sir? Cincinnati. Cincinnati, Ohio. Anywhere further away than that? How about west of the Mississippi? How about California or Alaska? How about the Virgin Islands? <laughs> well, wherever you're from, wherever you're going, sit back and enjoy the show. We have a whopper of a show lined up for you. A little later on, of course, we have a drawing for a fantastic door prize. Every night, guaranteed a winner. Right now, let's get into the heart of the entertainment. The next performer, our first artist, has studied his craft in the Far East, has studied in the Orient, where he has mastered the magic art of penetrating men's minds. Call it telepathy, call it ESP, call it black magic, we call it pure entertainment. Welcome, if you will, the man who sees all and knows all, <laughs> Dr. Obvioso. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. 
For my first feat of ESP, I'll need a volunteer from our audience. I have a gentleman right here, Doctor. You have a gentleman. <laughs> Sir, would you concentrate very carefully, please? Sir, you've just traveled over a very long distance. No. Mm. <laughs> Sir, you seem to have a business problem that's been troubling you lately. No. Mm. <laughs> you also have an emotional problem that's been troubling you. No. So would you concentrate very carefully, please? You are married? No. <laughs> Does the name Ruth mean anything to you? No. <laughs> the number 21? No. Sir, do the initials RB mean anything to you? No. <laughs> How about LM? No. RBB? No. PBY? No. Sir, have you ever seen me before? Have we ever met? No. Thank you very much. Dr. Abioso, thank you. Come on, Dr. Abioso, take him in the bow. Dr. Abioso. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that is seven nights a week. I don't know how he does it. Well, right now, before start time, as you've been waiting for, is the drawing of our fantastic door prize. Each and every guest tonight received a guest check with a corresponding number, which is on a lucky ticket. That ticket is dropped in our lucky fish bowl. And our prizes tonight include round-trip, all-expenses-paid tour for two to Honolulu, Hawaii, $5,000 in cash, a 25-inch color, television set, and what is the bonus prize tonight? It's the Vega, Danny. All right. <laughs> so look at that lucky ticket, and round and round she goes, and where she stops, nobody knows. And here is the lucky number. Two, four, seven, six, nine. Number two, four, seven, six, nine. I have number one. <laughs> number two, four, seven, six, nine. Do we have a winner? We don't have a winner. There is no winner tonight. That is a disappointment, ladies and gentlemen. But come back. Even though you have not won tonight, you are eligible to compete in future drawings. Well, right now it is start time, ladies and gentlemen. If you've been in any of the entertainment capitals of the world, I'm talking about London, Miami Beach, Las Vegas, or Hollywood, the next name is synonymous with comedy, synonymous with pure entertainment. Put your hands together and meet and greet and get ready for a belly laugh. The comedy star of our show... Jackie Sunshine! Okay, Hi. all right, you're beautiful. Hey, good evening, ladies and gents. It's great to be back here at Denny's on the Turnpike. You look like a terrific audience tonight, and I hope you're in the mood to laugh because I am too. It's, uh, it's great to be back here at Denny's. I want to tell you one of my favorite places. I just returned from a smash two-week engagement down in Atlantic City at the Route 62 Diner, where I had a wonderful time, except for the first couple of days. The first couple of days, I wasn't feeling good, so I went to the doctor. I said, Doc, it hurts me every time I do this. He said, so don't do that. He said, you ever had it before? I said, yeah. He said, you got it again. <laughs> Come on, folks. I know you're out there. I can hear you breathing. <laughs> I said, Doc, what is it? He said, it's $25 a visit. I said, no, Doc. Come on, tell me what it is. He said, you're going to need an operation. I said, how much? He said, $25,000. I said, Doc, I can't afford that much. He said, give me five bucks. I'll touch up the x-ray. <laughs> is this mic on? <laughs> is this an English-speaking audience? A week before I went to another doctor, I told him my problem. He said, you don't understand, I'm an animal doctor. I said, doc, you don't understand, it's not me, it's my wife. <laughs> I don't want to say my wife is fat, but when she sits around the house, she sits around the house. <laughs> What's the matter, sir, you don't like comedy? I just wanted a hamburger. <laughs> Yeah, and I just want a couple of laughs, you little pig animal. Come on, no, 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 come on. You want to come outside with me, huh? That's all the time we have, Danny. We've run out of time. We're a little short. Sick Danny, not again tonight. Say good night, please. Thank you very much. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you very much. How about that, Jackie Sunshine, ladies and gentlemen? Come on out and take a little while. Jackie Sunshine. Wait a minute, Jackie. Come on. Who wants well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We're running a little short of time. We're going to have to ask you to pay up and leave because more people are waiting to come into the theater. 
If you enjoyed yourself, take your friends. If, tell your friends. If you haven't, tell us. Driving. Out the drive carefully. The life you save may be your own. And if your wife is driving you to drink, ask her to drive you down here to Danny's. Thank you and good night. Okay, so do you want to pay up very quickly, please? I didn't get my hamburger. Bring out his hamburger. Twenty-five dollars ninety-five cents. Twenty-five for what? There's a minimum, a music charge, and an entertainment charge, sir. And there's a jacket rental fee too. Oh yeah, take too. that. And, and a gratuity, please. Here's your keys. That'll be six dollars. Thank you. Six dollars for what? Yeah, I changed the royal. <laughs> I didn't ask for my oil to be changed. It's the courtesy of the house, sir. Come on, come on now, don't go over there. Yeah. Unbelievable guy. Yeah. That guy is a real troublemaker. Boy, I don't know. Real we get all kinds down here, don't we? Sure do. You are great tonight. Thanks a lot. You were pretty yeah, good. You so much. You're good. A couple of jokes, mm. a couple of new ones. Uh, well, what do you think, Jenny? I don't know. It looks a little slow. I think we ought to close up. I don't think we're going to have a second show tonight. Mm Trucking Company. Oh. Charlton Heston will join us uh, in a moment. First, we have a word from one of our sponsors, then we'll be right back. Right. Our next guest, you all know, he's had more than 35 starring roles in motion pictures. Uh, he has an Oscar and numerous international awards. Uh, one of the most distinguished members of the motion picture colony. Would you welcome Charlton Heston? Oh, yes. Yeah. Your serve. Your serve. Love, yeah. 40. I swear you, I'm going to start introducing you as a, a tennis player instead of a motion picture star. Yeah, I picked up a copy of Tennis World today that just came to the house and was thumbing through it, and there you were down at, there uh, you go. Down at Fort Lauderdale when you had the uh, thing for the motion picture relief fund down there. And yeah, not, uh, what, two weeks ago? We were down at La Costa we together. La Costa. Oh, yes. You play a pretty mean game. I'm not up to your game yet. Well, we all, of course, what you have to bear in mind, we, we're all just hackers. Right. Compared to the players, none of us can play. I think one of the most... Uh, Important things I've learned playing tennis the last few years and the experience I've had playing with with players right. with the great players Is uh, an appreciation of the levels of the game uh, Tennis has been exploding over the past ten years. I think there are what something like 20 million players it's incredible, in the yeah. now. incredible and uh, I think uh, Almost all of them imagine there are three levels of the game them the best player in their club and Rod Laver, you know? yeah, <laughs> and in That's fact, the there are about seventeen levels of, of yeah. play uh, in in the game. And uh, as I'm sure you would agree, the the opportunity to to be on a court with the likes of Emerson or Smith or yeah. Newcomb or Laver, we played against uh, Clark Gravener down there, and Emerson and Newcomb were down yeah. there that day. And it was incredible. It's, it's a lot of fun. It sure is. You know, I was thinking of something today, and this may sound kind of weird. I was going down the list today, and I see the names of the people who seal ball, and I said, Charlton Heston. And I wanted to say, you know, you look, this, this sounds dumb now, you look like Charlton Heston. <laughs> now, you, you know what I mean? I now, the, the name fits. Now, what I'm saying is, <laughs> the name fits the way you look. Hmm. You, you, you have that commanding presence, and the name Charlton Heston. Absolutely. He Cesar, doesn't look like Don G. Churiaola. No. <laughs> he looks you like see, if, if this was Murray... No, he's not. Murray. <laughs> Just think about that for change. Murray Heston. But he looks like his name. Now, think Humphrey Bogart. I was thinking of people. Mm -hmm. Now, if a guy can name Bogart came to the studios and you didn't know his first name, you no one never, in the world would sit around and say, Humphrey. let's call this fellow who talks like this Humphrey. <laughs> you say, Sam Bogart? Yeah. Bill Bogart? That's Bill, what I meant. Bill, you don't look like you're a like, like, Right, but Jock. Jock. <laughs> That's why you look like your name. Now, you look like your name. Italian, right? Dom. Yes. Dom, yes. But, Domenico Deloise, yes. But Matthew. Matthew, no. Matthew Deloise. You see, it doesn't work. You see what I mean? Is that your real name, Johnny Carson? Yeah. 
Well, I must say you look like Johnny Carson. You really Carson. do look like him. He is Johnny Carson. I am. Yes. I mean, it sounds like a dumb thing, but it's and true. And is Charlton Heston your real name? Absolutely. Yeah. No yeah. kidding. I remember uh, one of the most humiliating and agonizing experiences of my life. Tell us I... about it. <laughs> <laughs> in front of all these people. Sure. Yeah. Uh, they are not listening. They are. They're lying in bed. Oh, it's God. nice to hear those moments, yeah. you know, because we don't think, we could just, we think you just part the sea, and, you know. Yeah. I like to hear one of you. You should see how many tries it took. <laughs> But uh, I was about 12 years old, and I went to a new school, moved to a new town. And I went in school, and, you know, the teacher calls the roll the first day to connect the names with the faces. And she got to my name, and she's reading, and she said, Charlotte Heston. <laughs> oh. And Ooh, she day. said, Charlotte Heston. <laughs> and she said, where's the little Heston girl? <laughs> Now, I can imagine... I got into three fights that day. <laughs> and I can imagine how long that must have gone through the oh. school year, because kids oh, at that age can be very cruel oh, without realizing the they're year. cruel. It was with realizing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's murder. Yeah. That's murder. So, I want to ask you something. I mentioned of all the pictures you played in. Uh, you have Three Musketeers is now out, and I understand. Opening, and uh, uh, opening, and uh, I understand it's, a, it's an amazing and a, and a fine, fine picture. I had a marvelous time yeah. in it. I'm a great admirer of Dick Lester, and... For once, I'm not playing one of the main cheeses. I play Cardinal Richelieu, who's the villain, and it, I had great fun in it. Back uh, in a costume in a period. Uh, picture, well, right? yeah, I do a lot. I do a lot of that. Well, the unusual thing about Richelieu for me, I've played a lot of historical characters, but Richelieu was the only guy I've played who had a bigger nose than I did, so I got to wear a false nose, which is kind of fun. You know? Yes, they are. Fun. Yeah. I never thought of that. That's true. No. You see, that's that's another thing that you can play. You can play that kind of a role. You looked the part when you played Moses. In the Ten Commandments, that was believable. And if you put some, a lot of other actors in there, uh, it just wouldn't come off. That, when that, I played Ben Hur, they never suspected the race was fixed. They I didn't know that. Won. Yeah, there you are. You see. <laughs> do, you, do you enjoy doing the? Uh, a lot of actors, I, I think, would feel uncomfortable uh, doing Roman with the togas and so forth. But you don't feel that way. It, in it 10 is because hard. You, to, it is hard. Yeah? But you have to be a really good actor and a very big actor, which is fortunately what I get to be commanding. I, yeah. There are a lot of marvelous actors who are not comfortable, and I suppose maybe therefore not effective, right. in period parts. Who, an offhand example, Steve McQueen is, I think, one of our best actors. Sir Paul right. Newman's another, but neither of them has ever done... Now, that's what I mean. You see, if you put Paul Newman in a, say, in an English wig and had to play a, an English lord or something, it just wouldn't quite seem right because of the physiognomy of the face or something and then probably the fact that he feels uncomfortable that may be part of it yeah. i don't know That's but i've done well i was trained for that kind of thing on the stage i've done a lot of period right. parts i suppose he's an odd odd thought i guess i've done more period parts than any other actor in the country which yeah. uh, aren't you mo aren't you comfortable though i mean i like you look very comfortable and you make us comfortable well there. I think it's... A lot of actors are bugged by the wardrobe, you know. But Putting you've got all the, the costumes. costumes. Yeah. And you see them between the takes. They take off as much of the outer part as they can because they can't sit down comfortably in it. And, but uh, you've got to make it feel like clothes, not wardrobe. This sounds really ridiculous. Yeah, I'll really get a reputation as a freak. But when I'm doing a period part, I often wear some of it home at night. Get out of here. No, no kidding. <laughs> No kidding. Swear. Is that Emmis? Uh, Scout's on it. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. I can see you driving down the freeway. I can't imagine him, you know, with, you know, saying, well, you, I don't mean the whole bit. Just, but, well, just uh, part of it. Just like just... when I played Michelangelo, you can wear the tights and a shirt home at night. And it, that's, Feels comfortable. in the first place, Elizabethan wardrobe is some of the greatest wardrobe ever developed. It's... Who did that wonderful story, and I, didn't, I don't know if it's apocryphal or not, when Victor Mature was doing some gladiator picture... And they went to some bar. They told it on the show. Some other guy. Oh, with Jim Backus. Jim Backus. Oh, yeah. And they went to some oh. bar, and they had all of the stuff on with the <laughs> thing on the helmets and so forth. And they sat down, and the bartender just didn't recognize him because they had all the beards and, but you know, the helmets and the things hanging. And he looked at him, and Mature looked over and says, What's wrong? Don't